October 15th sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2013 to 2017 session took place in the Assembly Chamber at Chinningham Street, where Health Secretaries Claudia Groom Duke moved the motion standing in her name that the Assembly implement programs to facilitate the alleviation of poverty in accordance with the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. The eight Millennium Development Goals, which range from having extreme poverty to halting the spread of HIV AIDS and providing universal primary education have been a milestone in global, national, and international development. And all of the development efforts of our country. Now, Mr. Presiding Officer, the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan for 2013-2017, CEDP 2.0, adopted as assembly policy, declares unambiguously that the assembly sustains an efficient structure of social protection to shield our vulnerable and disadvantaged people here in Tobago and of course to empower our people to realize their fullest potential. In this respect, the Tobago House of Assembly has made significant contributions towards the Millennium Development Goals and plans to achieve and support objectives within the Millennium Development Goal 1, which is to eradicate extreme hunger and poverty. And these have been, these, these uh, objectives have been made through the strengthening of the division of health and social services. And the aim of this division or the aims are to tackle poverty alleviation, poverty reduction, and so with a priority in the parliamentary allocation for our budget in the Division of Health and Social Services, we will see where the Tobago House of Assembly placed major priority on this division by allocating 517 million 572,361 dollars to the recurrent budget, as well as 32 million 700,000 dollars to the development budget. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, through a very strong collaborative effort among all of the divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly, we have laid the platform for stronger intersectorial collaboration for implementation and reporting on progress towards our assembly goals as well as the Millennium Development Goals and our deliverables as well are, are really coordinated and in a collaborative effort, we develop relevant programs to achieve these goals. In using indigence as our marker of severe poverty and hunger, Tobago went past the benchmark set by the United Nations for one of the more critical eight development goals. And not only have we reduced indigence, we have actually eliminated it. And so in social welfare, we have over 3,000 persons receiving senior citizens' pensions. We have over 500 persons on the island receiving public assistance grants, and over 1,000 persons have benefited from the general assistance grants uh, these grants include uh, housing assistance, household items, medical equipment, medical treatment, uh, domestic help, dietary uh, support, clothing, funeral grants, education grants, 
special child grants, pharmaceuticals, house rent, and school supplies. And these are only some of the programs that we institute in treating with social welfare for our citizens here in Tobago. I want to say here that the HIV AIDS program where we are developing our best practices, we have now sent our, pro, our best practice to the United Nations and I'm almost certain that they will have an international award for recognition of the kind of work where we have moved from the Tobago Health Promotion Clinic having created the kind of machinery and mechanism to treat with our people confidentially and privately and to include and to add our sexual and reproductive health and population development program onto that to ensure that they meet the needs of our, not only our age, not only our young people, but our women and men and to treat with issues of sexuality as well as other issues that impact on non-communicable diseases. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, I do want to say that uh, these are some of the programs and projects that we have instituted and that this will definitely continue to help to move our people from poverty to a more viable position on the island. So, presiding officer, we will all agree that poverty has many manifestations. It's manifested in a lack of income and productive resources sufficient to ensure sustainable livelihoods. It's manifested in hunger and malnutrition. It also manifests itself in ill health, limited or lack of access to education and other basic services. It also manifests itself in homelessness and inadequate housing, unsafe environments, social discrimination and exclusion, as well as increased morbidity and mortality from illness. It is also characterized by lack of participation in decision making and in civil, social, and cultural life. Mr. Presiding Officer, the issue of poverty and the challenge to improve the living standards has been engaging the attention of policymakers both in developed and developing countries for quite a long time. What we have seen over the years, Mr. Presiding Officer, is that while poverty rates have declined in all regions, it has been agreed that progress has been uneven. Even international evidence seems to suggest that the countries that perform better in terms of poverty alleviation have been those countries in South and East Asia with growing economies. But we will agree that data should inform policy. And in Tobago, we still lack access to Tobago-specific data on which we can make decisions and plans. And we lack you know, relevant and timely information about the extent of poverty on the island. And uh, we can only speak anecdotally and from observations when we say that it seems that there is not the visible signs of deep poverty here on the island. And Mr. Presiding Officer, I want to point and speak to several initiatives implemented by this administration to address the, the problem of poverty and to ensure as well that our residents here on the island enjoy a decent standard of living. I could point to the establishment of the Enterprise Assistance Fund Program and the Enterprise Assistance Grant Program to provide financial support to the development of businesses, especially among small entrepreneurs. So I could also point to 
expanded tertiary education through the financial assistance program, which has allowed a number of young Tobagonians to secure university and post-secondary post education, both locally and abroad. The improved infra physical infrastructure on the island, improvements to the sea bridge, the provision of new housing units, the introduction of home improvement grants to ensure that you know, we have a reasonable standard of living conditions and that we could maintain those conditions, as well as introduction of numerous social safety net programs that impact the elderly, the disabled, and the vulnerable in society. Mr. Presiding Officer, one sure way to ensure that we in Tobago, that we do not experience the levels of poverty present elsewhere in the nation and the Caribbean, is for us to continue to diversify and deepen the productive base of the Tobago economy away from its current dependence on, on tourism and in a manner that creates sustainable jobs. Over the next few years, we will continue to accelerate our diversification efforts to build a stronger and more resilient economy. And in this context, we will continue to promote business opportunities and facilitate and provide entrepreneurs, both large and small, with a platform for growth and development of a vibrant private sector on the island. I believe that poverty is not solely the assembly's business, but the eradication of poverty requires the collective efforts and the collective will of all Tobagonians for us to work together to eradicate the scourge of poverty. And Mr. Presiding Officer, I want to issue a call for us to revive and revitalize that Tobago spirit. Let us work collectively or else we may be charged later in life for being criminals. Mr. Presiding Officer, it was former President Mandela who said, and I quote with your leave, our people need proper housing, not ghettos. And by that, Mr. Presiding Officer, I shall address housing and settlements. So while UN Habitat has made a declaration aimed at having slum dwellers between 2015 to 2030, we in the Tobago House of Assembly have committed to constructing new houses for Tobagonians in need of a place to call their own and a place to call home with special emphasis on low and middle income earners. So Mr. Presiding Officer, by 2015, continuing into 2017, Tobago's housing settlement is expected to grow. Permit me, Mr. Presiding Officer, to turn to labor. When we make reference to labor, Mr. Presiding Officer, we are speaking about the people and our workforce and we are ultimately speaking about human capital development. This, Mr. Presiding Officer, means collaborating with all my colleagues and all the divisions in the Tobago House of Assembly, including the private sector entities throughout Tobago. Mr. Presiding Officer, this calls for a labor policy statement to be ratified by the Executive Council of the Tobago House of Assembly. I do not know, but the mandate suggests that it warrants such an intervention. Mr. Presiding Officer, confession is good for the soul, and being honest and forthright with the people is extremely critical, especially in the business of politics. And as such, I humbly submit that after having looked at the MDGs comparative to the CEDP, in relation to labor, labor has some catching up to do. And therefore, Mr. Presiding Officer, the Department of Labor would have to be more robust, more visible, and more proactive 
in an effort to surmount the challenges that exist in our society today. Another critical area for re-examination is the system of how labor matters are conducted and prosecuted. To support this, Mr. Presiding Officer, we propose to conduct the following. One, an industrial relations audit. Two, enforce rights compliance. Three, establish a recruitment policy. Four, promote a fair remuneration package for contract workers, as well as working with all divisions to bring symmetry and right scale to salaries between the various positions as it relates to contract workers. Five, a clinical and, re and robust training program for all HR units within the Tobago House of Assembly. Mr. Presiding Officer, as a result, employees will be more competent and even more loyal and as a result, Mr. Presiding Officer, having had all these initiatives in place, the issue of, of productivity will be a non-issue. The issue of poverty will begin to be reduced within our society here in Tobago. The two areas, Mr. Presiding Officer, that I would like to focus on as it relates to the Division of Education, Affairs and Sport, is goal number two, which is the achievement of universal primary education. And goal three, the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of, of women. When we talk about the first goal, which is universal primary secondary education, as a region, Tobago has 100%. And I'll say that again, Mr. Presiding Officer. We have 100% attainment at primary and secondary right across compared to other districts and regions in Trinidad. The only other region that is comparative with 100% is the Gomartin and the region of Point Fortin. We were able to do this by a number of critical interventions and programs that were both infrastructure, school repair programs consistently over the, over the years so that when, up to today, when we still have schools in Trinidad that have not been open for the school term, we have always ensured that at the beginning of at September, at the beginning of the school year, 100% of our schools have always been able to open. And that has been a non-negotiable instruction that has been given by the Chief Secretary. We would have also done that, Mr. Presiding Officer, through a program of programs within the schools itself that allowed improvement in, in what is being taught, how it is being taught, and the environment that the students had an opportunity to be part of. Mr. Presiding Officer, both as part of the primary school environment and, of course, as, as, as a part of empowering women and addressing the gender balance. Our sport in education unit would have embarked on an aggressive program to ensure the participation of young women and females in sporting activities in the schools. So that, for example, Mr. Presiding Officer, there would have, would have been a targeted attempt to provide um, equipment for our females in the primary schools to ensure that the cricket returns at the primary school level. So, Mr. Presiding Officer, as it relates to the MDGs and, and, the, and the Division of Education and our achievements to date, I, 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 I want to say that as, as the Tobago House Assembly, there, there's a lot that we can be proud for. We have recognized as the division there's much more that can be done, but we are happy as, as we look at, at some of the, the statistics across the region and Latin America, we can feel proud, and right here at nationally, there are some areas that we can feel proud of in terms of what we have been doing as, as, as a division and what has we been doing as an administration. Mr. Presiding Officer, based on enrollment data, 
about 72 million children of primary school age in the developing world were not in school in 2005, and 57% of these children were females. And of course, these figures are regarded as being optimistic figures. Mr. Presiding Officer, nearly a billion people entered the 21st century unable to read a book or even sign their names. Less than 1% of what the world spent every year on weapons was needed to put every child into school by the year 2000, and yet this didn't happen. Mr. Presiding Officer, infectious diseases continue to blight the lives of the poor across the world. An estimated 4 million people are living with HIV AIDS, with 3 million deaths in 2004. Every year, there are 350 to 500 million cases of malaria, with 1 million fatalities. And Africa, Mr. Presiding Officer, accounts for 90% of malarial deaths, and African children account for over 80% of malaria victims worldwide. And when we look at the local context, Mr. Presiding Officer, approximately 20% of this countries, and I'm talking both Trinidad and Tobago, live below the poverty line. Because we recognize, Mr. Presiding Officer, that we are strongest when we work together. And therefore, the challenge of poverty in Tobago requires people-based programs and initiatives in order to expand access to opportunities. And therefore, it is the business of all to get involved because poverty reduction is not just the business of the government, and in this case, the Tobago House of Assembly. The church that teaches us, above all good things, God desires that we be prosperous and in good health, and also teaches us to be our brother's keeper, needs to be involved. And Mr. Presiding Officer, government policies that bring about economic growth are powerful factors in lifting people out of poverty, there is no doubt. But as beneficial as growing income is, cultural and personal values are often a root cause of poverty. And relative to churches and faith-based organizations, governments don't do as well at addressing community values, beliefs about right and wrong, and personal behavior. Therefore, I must repeat this statement, although I may sound redundant, that we are strongest when we work together. So I'm really appealing for all to get on board. Even the business community, Mr. Presiding Officer, who I'm sure will prefer to have more shoppers than shoplifters, must do their part. Poverty reduction through community development and people development is the responsibility of us all. Mr. Presiding Officer, we in the Division of Community Development and Culture we are indeed leading the way and making significant strides in empowering the people of Tobago and consequently further reducing poverty. The opportunities are there, Mr. Presiding Officer, and therefore it is the responsibility of the people to access them. And as a people, Mr. Presiding Officer, as an island, our desire to drive fancy cars, live in nice houses, and wear nice clothes must never outweigh our desire to work and work hard because the poverty of ambition, Mr. Presiding Officer, is worse than poverty itself. And therefore, everyone should try to realize their full potential, Mr. Presiding Officer. And therefore, I will now sit in total support of this motion. I want to sum up that Tobago is well placed on the Multidimensional Poverty Index, MPI, which is a concept that recognizes multiple deprivations. The MPI sets multiple deprivations for individuals in respect of some 10 uh, indicators representing education, health, and standard of living. And the Human Development 
atlas that was developed for Trinidad and Tobago by the UNDP shows Tobago in a very good light relative to the national situation and compared to most region of Trinidad. And so our initiatives as an assembly with universal primary education, universal secondary education, and universal access to our primary health care facilities here in Tobago, and a sense of personal uh, security are uh, areas in which Tobagonians sense a better quality of life than that in Trinidad. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, employment creation by a vibrant private sector responding to the initiatives that we have made in the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan, Edition 2, remains a most critical step in sustained poverty reduction to facilitate the goals set out in the Millennium Declaration. Members, the question is, whereas Trinidad and Tobago endorsed the Millennium Development Goals of the United Nations in 2000, which inter alia established quantitative benchmarks to have extreme poverty in all its forms, and whereas the Millennium Declaration has set 2015 as the target date for the achievement of these goals, and whereas the Comprehensive Economic Development Plan, CDP 2.0, adopted as assembly policy, declares unambiguously that the assembly sustained an efficient structure of social protection to shield the more vulnerable from social risks and empower them to realize their fullest potential. And whereas the assembly in pursuit of the above has been diligently implementing an island-wide poverty reduction strategy while simultaneously working assiduously at increasing awareness among the Tobago population in order to ensure that the poverty reduction efforts move us towards a poverty-free Tobago, a place where everyone can live in dignity and enjoy a comfortable standard of living. Be it resolved that this House endorse the actions of the Assembly as it mobilizes communities across Tobago and implements programs which will facilitate the achievement of the goals set out in the Millennium Declaration. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have it. The motion is therefore carried. Thank you for joining us for the 15th sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2013 to 2017 session.